Well, hello, man cavers. We are back. Before we start, like and subscribe to this video. We're going to do a little experiment and see how many likes and subscribes we can get on this one video. So do it now. Right now. Don't cost you absolutely anything. It just means you'll be notified of more of my videos. So click that little subscribe button and the like button. Done it. Excellent. Right. We're going to have a little go. I think we need to make a start with Stuart. I think, now then, the first thing we need, I still haven't turned this over a full revolution yet. Let me get the phone in the tripod. Hey <sighs> Here we are. I think the first thing we need to do is get this coolant tank out of the way and get this engine off this base plate. Yeah. Right, the question I want to ask you guys is, do we leave this original paint on here or do we take this off and paint it i did ask should we strip this engine and that's already been answered for me yes we do need to strip it um i've decided that because in there i don't whether you can see let me turn a light on you can see in that camshaft there let me point in here there's a camshaft lobe come on focus camera there's a cam lobe there and a cam lobe there, some little lifters, and it is literally gunky in there. We're not going to be out cleaning there without disassembling this engine. Um, I'm looking at the bore. Looks a bit rusty. So I think we need to take this out and see if my cylinder honer will get in there. So I think we're going to start. We will take the head off this thing. Take all the crank out. I'll leave the flywheel on, mind you, because I don't fancy pulling that. Mag off, and then we can strip the thing totally. Um, hone the bore out, if my cylinder honer will fit, which I hope it will. And we can go from there. Let me get you set up. We'll get straight on. Ah. All right, there we go, guys. First job is we'll buzz this head off, if we can. Oh, yeah, there are all head bolts there. Let me see if these head bolts, and let's get this carb off first, so that's out of my way. So we'll see if we can get this carb off here. That should be a case of, oh, that's tight, Jesus. That should be a case of undoing this pinch bolt, and hopefully that will come undone. Come on. Oh, oh yeah, she's a coming. She's a-coming. Now, I can't remember whether I explained the history of these engines. I may have done, I may not have done. But I'll go through that. All right, pinch clippers. Off. There we go. There we go. All right, I will explain the briefness of these engines, what they were designed for. These were never, I'll talk as I go, these were never factory built engines. These were supplied, if you notice, they're made by Stuart Turner, but they're labelled a Stuart Sandhurst. And I'll tell you why that is, because these were actually originally designed to be assembled by military students at Sandhurst College, Technical College. And that's why our label Sandhurst. These were never supplied as ready-built engines. They were supplied in kit form and the cylinder and piston and piston rings, they were all machined but everything else, the crank, the mains, everything else was um, just um, basically a rough casting. So the students actually had to finish all of this stuff. And yeah, that's why they're called Stuart Sandhurst engines, instead of being labelled Stuart Turner. Can I get this push rod out for pulling down? No. I was hoping we'd got to get our push rod out. So yeah, and these were made, I believe, between, I think I read in a magazine article or in a book article what somebody kindly sent me. Thank you very much, no doubt you're watching. I think they were made between 1913, I think, and 1933, the earlier ones. And I think the earlier ones had a 
ML mag, they had a different mag to this. And after 33, until the end of production, but I'm not sure how long that was, they had this Lucas mag on. So this is after 1933 till the end of production. But it is really hard to date these because because they were just kit engines, they didn't have the wrong serial numbers, so it's pretty much impossible to date exactly when this is from. But yeah, I did read some bits in a magazine, which was quite interesting if I'm honest. Quite interesting about the history of these, but it's hard or I couldn't find much out about it. Somebody kindly sent me a sent me a um photograph of some pages out of a book about Stuart Sandhurst. Right, that exhaust, oh that spins off nicely look. Alright, now we should be able to, and there's another head bolt on there, is there? No. Nope. I'm hoping this head will now tap off. Let me get, I'm not going to make you guys cringe by using the claw hammer. We'll get a dead blow on my little baby. Well, for a start, guys, we'll ask it nicely with a little one. And if nicely don't work, there ain't another head bolt in there, is there? No, and I think this is part of the head. All the head bolts are out. Cool. Right. You can see this, you can see where I washed this thing with water yesterday, rinsed it with water after I soaked it a diesel. Cool. This head does not want to come off. There's nothing else holding that head on there. There ain't another bolt. Oh yes, there is. There's a damn nut still on there. You idiot. How did I miss that one tucked in there, look? No wonder he won't. Hang on, there ain't one on there, no. No, oh, that's off. Okay. I do not want to go driving screwdrivers in between that. That's the only problem. see a break this is a good use for a steel ruler isn't it she's coming guys she's coming can't remember this head probably hasn't been off here cool oh my god I can see some crud in there this probably hasn't been off here since some student assembled this years ago oh I see that's got a handmade gasket on there now there we go and there's a push rod oh my word that's a good job I did take this off look at the valves guys Woo! I think they did need a clean up so let's remove the push rod I'm going to keep this one this side and that one that side so I know which side they go. Oh my way, that's one of them where the piston doesn't come right the way at the top look. The piston ends half an inch in and there is some crud in there. It's a damn good job we had this head off. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is get a drill brush in here now. And try and clean that crap out. Oh. There you go. Oh, that's cleaned the cylinder out nicely. Hang on. All right, I need to go and get a cloth, and then we can be wiping that out. So we'll get my cleanest dirty rag and we'll just come in here and give this a clean, give this a wipe out. 
we'll push that rag out with the piston. There we go. All right, we've got a bit of crud in there. So we definitely need to have this piston out. So I think what we're going to do now, I want to make sure I put some witness marks on this on this cap so I know they stay together. There you go. So we've just scored a nice little witness mark in the top there. So I know when we put this together, the cap is the right way up. All right, don't let me forget. <laughs> oh, I've got to take this cap out now. All right, that's double nutted on there. We have a double nut. And to do that allow us to undo this first one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the first nut is coming guys. So yeah, nice little bit of history with this Stuart. Which is good because I do like to know all about these things. And after we're done this, we've then got to decipher whether there's any decipherable timing marks on here. So we can actually get this thing timed back up. If not, we're going to have to just take it a bit and time it, time it up by eye. Because you know within a little when you... Yeah, you know within a little when the valve's got her open and, you know, that's not that hard to work out. Right, that's the lock nut off there. Let's get this one off the bottom. Let me get these off. Yeah, I'll get these off. Oh, this one's coming undone easier. We'll get these off and then we'll be back. That nut has just dropped in the crankcase. Lovely. Right, we're going to bring you around here a bit. Because we've got this back end. We have the big end cap unscrewed. So let's see if we can get this piston off. There's the back end cap. Actually looks quite good. I can't see any major scoring in there at all, so we'll put E there. Oh, that's interesting. There's two end caps, and you're pissing your conrod actually spot to your other end cap. Look. So let's look at this one. See that? It bolts to that end cap. Oh, there's a little hole in there. That's different. Isn't it? Is there a little hole in this one? No. So. We've got no hole there. I'm the wrong way around. There's a hole go between goes between the conrod. Oh, I asked her allow for a little Allen screw that holds this piece onto the conrod. Interesting. So we can't get them wrong because we know that divot got to go in there. All right, let's see if we can ease this piston out now. We'll just give him an ease out. And hopefully he'll come. Here he comes. Oh, the rings are free. Look at that. I thought them rings might have been seized up. Ah, right. That piston don't come out through that bore. Right, that's got to come out the back end. Okay. Oh, that's going to make it a bit more tricky. I've got to nip them rings up. Because that conrod won't go through. And the conrod's been welded to this end. So we can't take this off by undoing that allen key. No, nope. because it's actually been welded. So that won't fit through the bore. Okay, so we're going to have to take that piston out from that end. Well, that's going to be interesting, isn't it? So we have got to now strip all this carrier out. Strip all this gear out of here. Right, I think we've got to see about getting the magneto off. Which will be these ones here, look. 
Oh yes, and it's held on with four bolts, not just two, look. This is, oh they're nuts, okay. Thought they would have been bolts going at the mag, but they aren't. Am I worrying about time and the mag up? No, I can do that by eye, so don't worry about that. And somebody said on the original model, somebody said in the comments, I think they said that these engines originally, the mags were driven off the cam. Well, this is no exception, except this being after 1933 had this Lucas mag, they obviously changed it. Now, that one comes up. They obviously changed it to... Um, this mag and chain drive because I have seen a couple of others on YouTube with the same chain drive so we shall see won't we we shall see and we'll hope this mag is actually alright I need to get some quarter drive Whitworth sockets guys can you get such a thing can you get little quarter drive Whitworth so I can use them in my little rattle gun I don't know Probably. Ooh. What's going on there? For some reason, that's got a different size. Somebody's put a different size socket um, in there, you know. Yeah. All right, let me find one that fits. All right, this one appear to be 11 millimeter. See that? There you go. All right. Let's now lift this magneto off here and get this chain out of the way. She's off. Ah, there's a insulated plate. And what is the mag insulated to the engine? That's most bizarre. Right, that's the magneto out the way. That's the magneto chain off. So we'll put them up this end. There we go. Right. Oh, them, them main bearings. Look how easy they spin. Look at that. This is still quiet and smooth. Look at that. All them years and it still virtually turns itself. Look. That is most excellent. All right, is there a timing mark on here? Let me get my old drill brush on here and try and clean this up. So we'll get our little drill brush on here. And try and clean these gears up and see if there's any dots on there for timing marks. I somehow don't think there is. It would have probably been left to the student to work the timing out for himself. Let's have a look. I can't see any timing mark on here at all. So the mag I'm not worried about. Is there any way I can scribe a witness mark on there? Ah, I know how we can do it. Right, ah, here we go. Right, let me show you around now. I know how we can time this thing. If we come round here, we have a dot on this crank with all that centre pin. If we line that up with that big end there, do you see what I mean? And we put a witness mark here, we can make sure... This all goes back together in time. Because I won't be taking the camshaft out, nor this idler pulley. They can stay in, we'll just clean. I just need the crank out 
and I'm, oh, so that will we get the piston out without cam in there? This is a good point. I think it will actually. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If we leave this this here lined up exactly, and then I put a witness mark in here again. Like so. Hang on. Oh, we've moved, we've moved. There we go. There we go. Right, let's, let's get a mark in it. Yep, we've got a witness mark on there now. Oh, yes, yeah, so we now know with our witness mark exactly how this comes off so now we can be getting these big end caps off and lift this lift this crank out of here and again it's been double nutted so let's hope the top nut will just come on oh they're both coming undone okay they're coming undone with fingers as well that's because this one threads directly into the block. Ah, oh, it's turning at the bottom. Okay, they're through holes. Ah, oh, you see, these go right through with nuts and bolts on them. Hopefully I can get to them all. That's the lock nut. This is that one out of the way. Oh, yeah. All right, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. We're getting her out, aren't we? And we need to take that little oiler off there as well. We're coming. So's Christmas, he says. All right, this one should pop off in a minute. There you go, that's the lock nut off. Now this one just comes off and all. There we go. Now this side. Ah, lock nut's just coming off on its own now. We got a bee in here in my new shed. Yep, straight away we have a bee in the new shed. Well, isn't that good? Let me try and grab that top lock nut. Yep, we have it. I've said this a hundred times, you know. You get stuff what was built years ago, everything still comes undone. It's unbelievable, and everything still comes undone. Yeah, you get something built in China, five year old, everything's rusted up, rings off. Still want to know why that mag is on a wooden plate. You wouldn't think that would earth to the engine, but must earth through the bolts. Truly bizarre. All right, now let's get these end caps off if we can. Pass this side off. One more nut here. And we should get this side off as well. Sorry this has got to be a bit of a long video guys. But if I miss any of this out. There will be someone saying. Oh I wish you had a film at all. Come on. Come on in cap. Right there we go. Right, that's the end caps off. There's some crud under there and all that. Look at that crud under there. Ain't good, is it? So we'll put that one on that side so we don't get muddled. Right, we should be able to lift this crank out. And out he comes. There's bearings on that, guys, look. 
and that's silent them bearings oh look at that ah oh, you can see the little hole where when you do your oiler the oil will go through them little holes to oil them bearings excellent so let's get this crankshaft camshaft out of the way we've got our marks on there at time I don't see any need I don't see any need at all oh, that one's coming out but these ones aren't do they come right out just ah there's that other little lock nut we dropped so we know where that goes I am putting all these conrod bolts back together look so we get everything and there are, oh there is some crud in here look there's our other bolt that one's loose in the hole but it isn't coming out this one's coming out just this one now oh. I asked you nicely Right, that one ain't gonna come out there, boy. Although that's loose. Oh, hang on. Ah, I don't know why. All right, that one's staying because it's on. That's hitting on the back of this gear. Let's see if this piston will draw out. Let me. I've got to compress them damn rings up. This could take a little minute to get these rings compressed up. So I've got to do them by hand. Right, what I've actually done here is I've took the rings off. <clears throat> which will be better actually because they needed to come off. So I've just popped them off. And we can now hopefully... Oh yes, our piston drawers out the back, look. So we need to get some wire wool and clean this piston up. First thing though, I want to know if my cylinder hole is going to fit in there. Let me put these big end caps over here. No, I'm keeping everything sided so I know which went in which side. Ah, let's see. If our hone, I want to lift this engine up. I need a bit of wood or something underneath that. Alright, let's buzz this oiler off. Then we'll get a bit of wood under there. Because that oiler is annoying me. There we go. Let's get this piece, these pieces of wood under here. See if they'll give us enough. I do. Will my honer go in there? This is going to be very much debatable. Will it fit in there? No. So my cylinder honer is too, way too big. Yep, yeah, won't fit. Right, okay, we're going to have to do this a different way. So I know you guys are like, yeah, you should get a smaller cylinder honer. We can do some honing with a bundle of wire wool, guys. And if you're wondering, well, how do you do honing with wire wool? I'll show you. I've done this on small engines dozens of times. All right, let me get something set up. So guys, this is going to make you laugh. We've got a bolt in a drill. Put your bolt in your bit of wire wool and turn the drill. There you go, that's wrapped around. Now, we want to lubricate this cylinder with some WD. Chuck him in here. And there you go. Let's get some speed. There we are, where are we now? And this will just clean that cylinder out. Is this any good if you've actually got to hone a cylinder? No. But it's perfectly alright. Just to clean. Oh, look at that. It's perfectly alright just to clean one. And if you're wondering, well that ain't worked. Look in there. Our cylinder. Shiny. Look at that. Right, I'm going to wipe that out with a rag. 
using the same method. So we'll reverse our drill and take our wire wool off. There we go. And we use that wire wool to do the um just wrap your rag. There we go. Speed two. And we'll just clean out. There you go. That should, we should have a nice, oh, mate, mate, you can't see in there. This cylinder, can you see? I hope this camera's focusing. This cylinder is in excellent condition. I can feel no ridge in there, no wear. Oh, yes, this cylinder is perfect. I am most happy with that. That cylinder has, oh, that is brilliant. This engine has not had a lot of use at all. Nah, there is no wear mark in there. Not one little inker. I just want to make sure our oiler hole is clear, which is, that's up that end. I can feel no marks on this cylinder at all. Oh, this is most excellent. Right, I think now we need to get this head cleaned up. Look at the state of that. Yeah, I'm glad I took this head off now. I mean, the valves are opening and closing, but that's not ideal. We'll get this cleaned up. So let me get these bits cleaned up, and then we'll be back. You don't want to see that on camera, because that's just going to be me with a wire wheel just giving them things a clean so we'll be back when we got them cleaned up and then we'll clean in that crankcase back in a minute guys well guys we have the head off and cleaned up look at all this all this gasket material i got off this cylinder and around the head lot look at that lot <laughs> All right, I think what we're going to do now is try and get these valves out. That looks to me like we've got little keepers here where we pull the spring down. Somehow, can we do that with a small screwdriver? Just pull that spring down. Oops. I know I've got a posh valve spring compressor, but... How do these keepers come out of here? Keepers, cotter pins, whatever you call them. They being a kit engine, there's no real, there's no real um manual on how to get these things to bits. There we go. Oh, I see that neat little keepers. So we'll put them on that valve and help. There you go. These on that valve. And our valves should, they look equal size to me. There you go. One valve out, two valves out. Cool, we've got a bit of crud on that valve, look. Good job we had them out, isn't it? Oh yeah, what do the valve seats look like? Let's get our cloth in here. And give them a wipe out. The bow seats actually look quite good look. That's where the spark plug go. You want these two. They actually look quite good. But it does show this engine has done a bit of running. Because of the crud on that valve look. This one, which is obviously the exhaust. Clean as a whistle really. But this inlet... Yeah, this engine has done a bit of running to build all that carbon up. All right, let me clean these up. We'll be back again. All right, guys, we are going to lap these valves in now. Ah, now, which side's inlet? This is the exhaust side, isn't it? That's the inlet side. I will just blow all that through. But I, first of all, now, let's blow that through first. Yeah, that's clean as a whistle. That is clean as a whistle. 
So inlet valve is this cleaner one. So he got to come in here. So we'll put a little bit of paste on this. Just a little. And we'll get our drill on this side. I know I'm not using the silly little stick. And I'm out. There we go. We'll just do that for a bit. Oh, that undone the drill. And we'll see how we're going. So this is that inlet one again. Put E back on. There we go. There we go. Let's see what sort of ridge we've got on this valve now. They shouldn't. Well, there should be a nice solid one all the way around. Look at that. Look at that. Not one pit, not one score. Excellent. Let's look at our valve seat. Again, brilliant look. Right, I'll do the same with the exhaust valve. And we'll be back again. Right, here we are back. And there is our mate and surface for our exhaust valve. So our valve seats are lovely. Here is our exhaust valve. Looks cruddy on the edge here, but the actual seat and surface is brilliant. Not whether you can see in there, there's no pits. And there's a perfectly shiny ring, which is where it seals. Perfect. So, we can be getting our cylinder head back together. But before you do that... I'm going to take this spark plug out and then we want to clean to make sure all the valve grind and paste is out of there because the last thing you want is that working down into your valve guides. So high pressure brake cleaner is certainly the way to do that. Alright, there we go. We've got the plug loose. Ooh, uh. Well, that's a very strange spark plug, guys. Look at that spark plug. There's only threads that way, look. That's all bare up there, look. Let's get a bit of wire wool on here and give the old plug a clean. Well, look at that. Never seen a plug that isn't threaded all the way to the bottom, look. What plug is that? Let's have a look. It's a champion. Can't see champion on it. What's just gone on the floor? Uh, valve spring. There we go. What is that? A champion what? A champion N5. Hmm. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? It's not threaded to the end. I don't look factory machine. That's like someone's filed that off, to be honest. Look at that. Ain't even round. That look like that plug has been sort of filed down. I wonder why that is. Has someone put a bogus plug in there over the years and just ground it down to fit? Or, oh, it don't even feel round. Oh, well, we're going to keep using it, so that's what we're going with. Right, we're going one step further, guys, and we're taking the engine off this base plate. Because I've just noticed there are nuts and bolts come through to hold this engine onto this base plate. And I think that might enable more cleaning to be done. I 
Oh yes. So that's that off. What are these two in here? Alright, that seems like this engine's ready to lift off this base plate. Oh, it does. Look at that. There we go. Our block is off. So we can give that a proper clean now. Oh, I see. That camshaft is just threaded in there. This is so interesting, guys, to see how this all worked. Oh, look at this. Look at the state of our lifters. Look, look at these lifters, guys. Look at that. Now, what obviously this is, is there's obviously a trough. Let's see if we can get you zoomed right in. Here we go. There's quite obviously a trough here with little holes where the oil run down onto these lifters. Now, this lifter, surprisingly good. This one, cool. This one's really stiff. Let's see if we can get out trough. There's a trough there. There's a trough there. Look. And two tiny little holes where your oil go through. So yeah, two tiny little holes where your oil go through and drop onto them lifters. But there was no way we was going to clean all of this. There's leaves, bits of polythene. Look at this crud in here, look. We need to clean this base plate right out, which I'll do outside off camera. Look at that, look, look at all that crud. Years of crud and muck. I say we'll clean this out, and then that might be a case of we'll end this video. Because I do need to order, oh, look at all this, look. I do need to order some gasket material. There we go, look at that. Yeah, this is cruddy. I do need to order some gasket material to remake a head gasket. Look at that. Yeah. That is terrible, isn't it? So let me get this base plate cleaned up. And again, we'll be back. Well, here we go, guys. We have got the base plate all cleaned up, and that is spotlessly clean, isn't it? Look at that. Look how nice and clean that's come. This is begging the question, do we paint this engine, strip all this original paint off and paint it? I'm tempted to leave it, you know. Of course, that is the original paint, what that student would have used when he painted this engine when it was built. And it's in, actually, it is a little bit rough on the cylinder. I got that the wrong way around. It's a little bit rough on this cylinder, but I don't know. What do you reckon, guys? This is a really tough one. Paint this or leave it. Oh, that would be a shame to paint it because, oh, I don't know. It's just this is the bit people see. No, I'm, I don't know. I'm so torn here as to whether I paint this or leave it original. It's bugging me being the wrong way around. There you go. Yeah, so paint this or leave it, guys. Obviously, I got it clean in this crankcase. Yeah, I've already done the bed plate. What do you reckon? Right, I think we're going to leave this video here. Um, yeah, because we're going to have to make a head gasket up. Clean the piston and do some other bits and pieces. How long's the video? That's got to be a good 45 minutes now, hasn't it? Maybe an hour. Right, I think we're going to leave this video here, guys. And we will be back for another one. All right, let me get my phone out of the tripod. And we'll say a good cheerio to you. Thank you very, very much for watching. I know a lot of you are totally in love with this. I know a lot of you love this little engine. I've had so many comments. And believe me, I have had some messages about, oh, that's lovely, is it for sale? No, it is not. It is mine. And that includes you, Wendy. Ah, but if I ever do get rid of it, you will be on the short list. Because you also wanted this. Right. 
that's going to be it. And we will see you next time. So it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Stuart Sandhurst. Shall we call this engine Sandy? Yeah, let's call this engine Sal. I don't normally name my engines, but Sandhurst, Sandy, girl's name, perfect. So it's goodbye from me, goodbye from Sandy. Ah. Lovely.